Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 20 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this episode, we're gonna take a look on how to create this uh, super nice footer area for our blog loop. And we're gonna style a little bit the standard posts type because if you remember, we left the design, the front end with something like this, something really super ugly, just printing information and just throwing stuff out there. This is not wrong. We're not doing anything wrong. We actually doing something good. We are focusing on content and functionalities more than the design or the good looking aspect of our theme. Having a design file with the style that we want to use, it's super helpful because it gives us as developers the ability to focus on the uh, functions on the back end on the theme functionalities and print all the stuff right away without worrying about the style without worrying about the look of the website we have the design reference so we can focus on all the techy and nerdy stuff so let's code this bottom part the tags list and comment link if you remember in the previous lesson i created this custom function called sunset posted footer and we have to actually code this function so let's access inside our ink folder the theme support php file and down here inside the section blog loop custom functions let's code something nice inside the function sunset posted footer let's remove the return here let's create a little bit of style for our return so let's create a div class plug footer or maybe post footer dash container let's close the tag I want to use bootstrap here because I have the ability to use bootstrap. So let's use the div class row. Let's close again the div because we opened row and let's open div class column extra small 12 because I want this to be stacked to be like 12 columns width when it goes to mobile at a smartphone size, but then I want a call small to be six because I want this to be in two columns if we are on a tablet or a bigger size. So let's put a little bit, let's interrupt the echo and here we can put like tags just as a placeholder and then we can copy these entire area because we have the same exact class and same as a container type and here we can put comments so now we can do something pretty easy we can write directly inside our return because wordpress gives us a couple of functions that do everything we need to create that bottom area so the first function that we have to call is the get the tag list and we can write get d underscore tag singular underscore list in this function we can use three attributes we don't have to pass the last attribute because the parent function is inside the block loop so the id is automatically passed the first attribute is the before we can specify what's before the tags list what's the separator of all the tags and what's after the tag list so we can wrap everything around and this is pretty sweet so let's put single quote let's create a div class tags list and after let's single quote let's close this div and the separator i want just space i don't need to put any comma i don't need to put any special characters because all these links are going to be separated in css so let's just put an empty space and we're gonna be good to go here we have to create a little bit of icon we have this icon here that we can 
call from our custom icon font and it's before the list of tags so we can put something here so let's create span class let's close the span right away and let's use sunset icon to call the actual font and then sunset tag to call the actual single icon. I am using a span container to create the icon because it's an inline element and by default a span is an inline element and I should use this logic or at least you should use this logic when you have multiple indentation. If you have a div that it's by default a block and it's made to do containers, structures and columns and this stuff and you have to print inside a div a single element that it's in line, always use a span. We don't need to use a div. A span is better for inline content. And we did the function for the tags. The second function that we have to use is for the comments. And also here WordPress gives us pretty much whatever we need. So now in the design file, we have these seven comments number here. So I want the number the word comments and the icon of the comments, of course. And I want this part all clickable. So if a user clicks here, it goes directly to the blog post, but scrolls down directly to the comment section. But in this case, we cannot use an inline function because we don't have a get derivation on the function that we want to use that is going to print whatever we want. We have to create a small variable to collect all our information and create a specific comments variable with whatever uh, text we want to print. So let's use, let's create a, a variable called comments underscore num to like numbers and use get underscore comments underscore number and we don't need to pass the post ID because we are still in the loop so it's going to work automatically. Now this variable is going to have the number of comments that we uh, that that post has so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3 or whatever and now we can check a little bit to create a little bit of customization. So if first of all comments underscore open it means that if the comments of uh, the comment section of this blog post is actually open we don't want to print a wrong variable we don't want to check for the comments link if the comment section is closed we have this otherwise we can write whatever get yeah, comments link otherwise let's write the else here we can create the variable comments that it the one that we're going to print comments, it's going to be equal to underscore underscore brackets comments are closed. This double underscore function is pretty much identical to the function that I used in the previous lesson, the escape E uh, function to print uh, whatever text or whatever content inside a PHP function without creating any error. You can use either or both, it really depends on you. So uh, right now, if the comments are closed, we're gonna have this comments variable that has just this simple text, comments are closed. Otherwise, we can check something and we can can create something nice. So let's create another if, another conditional, and check if the comments num variable that it's collecting the number of comments, it's identical to zero. It means that yes, the comments are open, but no one commented it, the post. We can write the comments variable that we want to print. It's going to be equal to underscore, underscore, brackets, single quotes, no comments, else if the number of comments is bigger than one, we can write comments is equal to the number of comments because we want to print it, plus we merge the strings with the dot and single quotes space comments semicolon else it means that without specifying any variable so if it's not zero and is not bigger than one it means that it's equal one we have to write just comments is equal to double underscore brackets single quotes 
one space comment. And now here we have to do something before printing. If we just simply print the comments here, we're going to have, of course, different derivation. In my case, we're going to have no comments because I didn't put any comments in that blog post. But uh, we don't have the link because this function automatically is not going to create the link. So we have to activate the comments link to directly uh, point to the commenting form or the first comment of the blog post. So to do that, we can uh, add it to this variable by creating um, href tag. And as I used before, I can reuse the same variable because until I write something inside this comments variable, these variable is going to maintain whatever it has inside. So I can use always the same variable by inputting the same exact variable inside the same variable. So it's a variable inception. You can use the same variable name by putting inside itself the same value that is carrying. So we you you don't risk to overwrite it. Hope it's clear, but let's let's keep going. Let's create simply um, a href. It's equal double quote and here we interrupt the single quotes and we put dot dot to connect a php function the php function is comments underscore link and also in this case we don't have to use the two attributes because are also deprecated this function is going to just return the full url of our blog post plus the correct hashtag to point to the uh, first comment or the commenting form of that specific blog post and here we can close the href let's connect again single quote dots dots and let's print the comments here variable and then here we can close the a tag using this function of wordpress is really useful because it's gonna automatically update itself in the case a user uses a uh, third-party plugins like discus or whatever other commenting system to integrate into wordpress this link is gonna automatically be updated by that plugin of course if that plugin is written properly and now we don't have to change anything because we're already printing the right variable let's save it and let's see if we broke something in the process let's access our front end let's refresh it and here we have in our footer era we have uh, the things that we have wordpress to print but here if you notice the link the url is visible it's like being printing before this actual section we don't want that so what we have to do we have to change this variable from comments underscore link to get underscore comments link and we don't have to pass any variable so as i said before the get is necessary to not print directly uh, a function or the result of that function so if we save it now and we refresh our front end the link disappeared but the link is correctly here so if you can see here when you click you're gonna have your full url the actual blog post url and then the hashtag comments that is the default hashtag we don't have a comment section so it's not going anywhere but we're gonna have it in the single blog post page but let's keep styling here this something is missing is the comment icon so let's fix that by adding here a space and let's use span class equal double quote sunset dash icon sunset dash comment save it let's go back in our front end refresh and now we have this nice sweet icon so uh, we have pretty much all the elements in our front end. We are printing all the information. Now we have to style a little bit our blog post because right now looks pretty ugly, right? So super quick lesson for today is pretty much it. We just saw how to print some custom information here in the footer area of our blog post. And we created this custom function that we can reuse in wherever post formats or block loop, or whatever we want. We can use this function. We can reuse the header function to integrate or print whatever information without rewriting the same thing and updating the same thing for every blog loop or every different post format that we're gonna use in the next video we're gonna finally style the front end and we're gonna have a better looking first post format 
If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you are confused or these arguments are too advanced for you, I suggest you to check the WordPress 101 for beginner developer series where I talk more slowly and I um, explain better in detail all the basic functionalities of WordPress and how to create a theme from scratch if you're a really beginner and you don't know anything about WordPress or PHP. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!